So I was skulking around the Facebook group Dead Space Necroposting Trademark the other day, where the dankest of Dead Space memes are posted, and I came across this picture that someone had made. Papa Roanoke will likely never stop talking about Dead Space, even if it starts coming down to me just discussing, you know, how there could have been a poetic end in Dead Space 4. But luckily EA ruined any chance of that, which just released the franchise already and let other people build something with it. Anyhow, you're keeping the dream alive over there, guys and gals, so never stop. Of course, with Negative Atmosphere still in the works, which if you haven't seen that yet, definitely need something to go check out. The horror survival genre is still alive and well, just in the indie section. Anyhow, speaking of Dead Space, as the outbreak continues to ransack colonies, ships, planets, mining operations, whichever, the most dangerous aspect of these outbreaks is the passage of time. With each second ticking by, more and more people will inevitably be converted to Team Necromorph for a multitude of reasons. Starting as a signal entering the mind of the people and corrupting the way they think, those affected would then go on to hallucinate monsters, become monsters, or have their aggression levels peak off the charts. This would result in them either ending family and friends around them through fear of what they see, or taking themselves out of the game early. As the outbreak progresses, eventually, whether it's a hallucination or not, real monsters will start showing up and hacking people apart like a hot knife through butter, making it increasingly difficult for anyone to discern what was a real threat, a person who's not a threat, or something that isn't even there. This results within hours of an entire area being plunged into chaos with no countermeasures able to be deployed to effectively control the outbreak. Only a small percentage of the human population would be able to remain resistant, with most succumbing and taking themselves out shortly after exposure to the energy source that the marker puts out. As minutes turn to hours, and hours turn to days, within the probably the first few hours, I would say, necromorphs would begin showing up as the biomass from those who have dropped would begin altering and changing muscular as well as osseous structures to become bladed monsters capable of great feats of strength and brutality. Barricades would be broken down, doors smashed in, and those in hiding would be found as the threat grows more and more out of control. Those who are resistant at this point would also begin to suffer their own hallucinations, much like Isaac has. It can be assumed that once they do, most would not be lucky enough to survive the onslaught and the hallucinations would probably make them be quickly taken out. Those who are immune wouldn't have to worry about the hallucinations, but still have to worry about the very real threat of others who are slowly losing their grip on reality and the monsters all around them, showing that even the immune will likely be added to that biomass as well. However, at the beginning stages of the outbreak, species currently experiencing the outbreak start in really just their regular forms, attacking, injuring, and ending others. So like, if I were to attack you, it would just basically be me attacking you. They would ultimately, though, turn into infectors, slashers, and leapers to start the first wave of transformations. As the outbreak moves into a deeper timeline, larger variants would then start showing up to decimate groups who may still have a tenuous hold on what's going on. However, even with the arrival of these larger necromorphs, this is not the only changes that will be made to the slashers, leapers, well, actually really any of them. As we have discussed before, co-opting the outbreak, a form of viral bacteria will begin to crop up everywhere, infecting people, creating pustules, and then changing the environment. And if you'd like to see a video discussing this bacteria, I will link it at the end. It's pretty interesting and explains why, uh, you know, it's considered a viral bacteria, seeing as though these are two completely separate forms of life. I mean, if you even want to consider viruses a form of life. Anyhow, this bacteria may play a crucial role in creating a form of necromorph whose longevity and survivability far outclasses the original forms of themselves earlier in the outbreak. Known as enhanced necromorphs, these creatures are more powerful and can absorb more damage than the average necro can, at least concerning early outbreak necromorphs. So in today's episode, we'll be discussing how these variants arise, what makes them so powerful, and why they are darker in coloring than the early versions. So first things first, did you guys know there's a lot of people who can't actually bring themselves to play Dead Space? I know, it's pretty bizarre, right? It's just a horror game where if you mess up badly enough, you are brutally ended in ways that pretty much rival Mortal Kombat. I mean, what's not to love? Well, based on this information that has surprised me, I think the first thing we should do is establish what is an actual enhanced necromorph. Well, as the name implies, it's enhanced. Thanks for watching. On the real, however, these creatures are essentially and morphologically the same, but the main differences, as you might guess, is they are stronger, seemingly quicker, and able to withstand more damage than their earlier counterparts. While no information exists as to why this is the case, there are plenty of context clues that we can kind of look at to discern for ourselves, 
why these creatures are the way they are. The enhancement that we see doesn't appear to be based on specific type of necromorphs, but is really more based on time. We see whether it be slashers, leapers, stalkers, brutes, pukers, man, even the feeders in the belly of the alien necromorph, all of them have a variant that makes them stronger than what they were first originally formed as. So the question is, why are they so much different if they are basically looking the same apart from the darker coloring? And for that matter, what is the darker coloring? When looking at a standard enhanced necromorph, the first thing you're bound to notice is the darker coloring all over the body. Whereas the earlier infected necromorphs have their original skin colors, or at least what is left of their skin, the enhanced seem to be the same shade of kind of blackish red no matter what they look like prior. The generalized thinking behind this is that it's nothing more than basically the skin having been destroyed, which also led to the coagulation and wide-scale rupturing of blood vessels with bruising and pulling have happened. When you are altered and changed by the marker signal or by the viral bacteria, it appears that certain areas of your body are more favored for their usefulness than other areas. There are quite a few tissues in the body, such as nervous, muscular, connective, osseous, epithelial, etc. But shortly after your infection, these areas that are more heavily favored would be the nervous, muscular, and osseous. There is actually a clear indication, though, that the marker signal affects the nervous tissue even prior to your transformation, as shown with the hallucinations and freakouts that people will have. After you turn, your muscular tissue is then pulled and changed, which results in bones being broken and patriated elsewhere to create things like blades, larger vertebrae, and even straight up bone armor like in the Tormentor. Key here is though, the necromorph infection seems to be choosing certain high priority tissues to wreak the most amount of damage in the area to make them viable in combat. Again, bone, nerves, muscle are all highly useful to the necromorph and its attempts to turn everyone around it. However, with all that said, there are some virtually useless tissues that we have really kind of seen, which may explain why the enhanced necromorph appears morphologically the way it does. As the tissues and bones grow and stretch the surrounding tissue, certain areas become virtually destroyed. In this case, it's most clearly the skin. The connective tissue underlying the skin as well as the epithelial cells are torn apart, inducing massive bleeding and trauma. Upon coming into contact with the air, this would coagulate the blood and tissue as it truly is destroyed and likely not revived by the marker signal as it may be too far gone to save. But this may actually be intentional. Currently when you look at someone, the skin on their body is not living. All surface tissue is basically just dead skin cells with the living skin underneath. This dead cell matter on us protects us from water, exposure, microbes, and in general just keeps us relatively safe in our environment by keeping a layer of dead between the living. Pretty interesting, isn't it? This is essentially what the brother and moons have intended with their infection, but to a much higher degree. With the connective tissue and all the epithelial cells destroyed, this in turn creates a larger barrier between the necromorph and the outside world. This massive tissue is present really in the other necromorphs as well, but still may be weaker concerning the coloring, thus making them less resistant to outside damage. If this barrier hypothesis is to be believed, and really to be believed to be a reality, this may also explain why all necromorphs can exist in the vacuum of space exposed to the elements and dangers to it. I mean, even humans can exist out in space for about a minute with our standard meat suit that we have and the protection that it offers. Granted, it's extremely uncomfortable, but you don't instantly get bodied out there. With the necromorphs, however, this thicker, uh, I guess, flesh allows them to exist seemingly indefinitely, or at least for the duration of the outbreak as they continue to operate. This barrier essentially is a conglomeration of skin cells, blood coagulation, and connective tissue all coming together to allow the creature to be protected from the outside to increase its survivability in all environments. However, this would take time if completed through the route of the marker signal, which is why we don't see too many enhanced necromorphs right out of the gate. It takes time for the skin to succumb and then create this covering over the body. There is a quicker way though around all of this and it's predicated on how much bacteria is available in the environment. We have seen with Captain Matthias that he was just a body laying on a medical table. When an infector jumped into the room with him and turned him, he was instantly turned into an enhanced slasher. With Ranko though, really he kind of shows up to pull you out of the asylum on Titan Station with the outbreak just happening and then he is attacked and he becomes a standard necromorph. Well, why is this? Well, again, it's based on time. Bacteria needs to take time to divide and expand. It's clear that infectors are literally just factories for this stuff. 
As the infection continues, this bacteria is dividing and building up in the other end of the infector's proboscis. But at the beginning of the outbreak, this bacteria really has not built up to the levels that we would see later. Ergo, those infected are injected with likely less of the bacteria, which absolutely has the ability to alter them already, but does not actually contain enough to produce the enhanced variants. However, as hours pass, this bacteria continues building in the infectors, but not just that, but those who were actually infected earlier. So this is why the one on the Ishimura who infected Captain Matthias was able to actually turn him into an enhanced slasher because that particular infector had been around longer, whereas the one that actually infected Franco probably was not around for that long. And you can actually see for yourself just how much of this viral bacteria has continued to build up. Take a look at the infected tentacles, exploder arms, and even crawlers that we see on Titan Station. Their glowing bioluminescent features are a direct result of the bacteria amassing and growing within their bodies. These weak areas, when exposed to air and plasma, detonate, which again, I actually have a video going over all of that and exactly why the bacteria does this and how it's doing this. But the coloring and the light produced is the main thing I want to focus on at this point. Now take a look at an enhanced necromorph. The eyes are a dead giveaway to what's actually happening internally. Every enhanced necro has the same light emitting from their eyes, which can be light yellow to a darker red depending on how long it's been exposed to and what form it has taken. The bacteria coupled with the signal continues to have a continuous impact on the body of the infected and also changes them over time. The bacteria may even act as a sort of medium with the body infecting cells, keeping them alive through possibly something that may be replacing ATP and altering the body internally while destroying the outer portions in order to keep the internal mechanisms more functional. And considering this bacteria at least I'm hypothesizing it to be so, is an anaerobic bacteria, that means that really it could produce energy in the absence of oxygen, which would also mean producing a barrier to keep oxygen out of the body would be beneficial to the bacteria. And not only that, but again, this may explain why the necromorphs can exist in the vacuum of space quite easily. So I think we all have a pretty good grasp now on externally why the enhanced versions are the way they are, but what is happening internally? Now, if you notice, the body does not appear to be any larger or stronger. In fact, it almost appears to be less muscular than some of the enhanced versions of Necromorphs, while others do appear larger and have larger upper bodies and slashing appendages. So what makes them more resistant to damaging hits exactly if they kind of still look the same? Well, the first thing is obviously the scab-like armoring all over their body is going to provide additional protection from damaging hits and also make it easier for the creature to stay together in the presence of damaging blows from a force multiplier. But the bones, muscle, and nervous tissue themselves have entered an altered state, making them more connected in a way that, let's just go on to explain that. So you're sitting there, you're pretty adaptive, right? Let's say you take your meat suit on over to the gym and then you start lifting. Well, right out of the gate within the first two weeks, your nervous system is the first thing to be strengthened. It is known that the nerves connecting to the spine, creating movement known as motor neurons, have their connections increased and improved, allowing you to more effectively coordinate movement. The next thing to happen is the muscle mass increases, fibers are strengthened and increased in size, allowing for more powerful contractions, leading to increased strength and also body size. And as time progresses, bones become more dense and stronger due to the muscle pulling on them, which in turn increases the overall durability of your body. So why am I telling you this? I believe all these events are taking place in necromorphs as time progresses. Upon initially being infected, you have a regular amount of human strength and connectivity between the different tissues of the body. Some may even have less strength due to low gravity environments. With the bacteria first entering the body in low levels and the signal hijacking your brain, your body is about as strong as a normal human, and thus normal force measures work against the newly formed necros. However, as time goes along, again the barrier at the surface protects but bones have become more durable, muscle has become stronger and can more forcefully pull, and the nervous tissue likely has grown more connections to the motor neurons, leading to better strength and coordination. This strength can be seen by how they can take a hit and keep going, which would put down a newly formed necro quite quickly, or how they are able to run full speed at Isaac, while the newly formed necros are slower and easier to run away from. Essentially, it's the marker and bacteria learning your body or even possibly hijacking specifically, say, the brain, and then using the body. I believe the overall durability is going to come from the skeletal system, however. 
We have seen time and time again how the skeletons of necromorphs are beefed up to ridiculous proportions, so much so that it actually exits the body and breaches the skin. Whether these be new blades formed uh, from new arms, or the vertebrae on the back, or the conglomeration known as a brute, the reality is altering this portion of the body is basically just par for the course. And this would explain why they are so freaking durable that a fully upgraded plasma cutter has difficulty cutting through them. Which by comparison, if the audio log of the uh, guy who literally shoots off his legs and arms with a plasma cutter is to be believed, it should only take about one hit. So to get into the importance of bone density, there are humans right now who have something known as double bone density. For some reason, their bones are just denser than average. These are people who likely have never broken a bone despite being in situations where they should have snapped like a twig. It's hypothesized that certain genes may have carried over from Neanderthal, and this may have sparked the double bone density, but what's more interesting is there's really no ill effects. They usually have a little tougher time swimming because they're less buoyant, but people go their whole lives never realizing that their bones are basically twice as dense as normal. In fact, anecdotal, I mean, I've never had my bones tested, but I probably should have broken my bones like 10 times over or broken something at least, but despite just getting hit in football and wrestling and jumping down three stories from a balcony one time, like I just haven't broken anything yet. But what's most interesting about all of this though is you likely couldn't pick somebody out of a crowd who had double bone density. And this is what I believe is actually happening in the enhanced necromorphs. The reason they don't appear any larger or changed in any real capacity is because of its bones. Likely the osteoblasts have been sent into maximum overdrive, compelled by the viral bacteria altering the genetic codes of them to increase osseous growth in the body, making thicker bones or combining bones with other bones from other bodies, or in general, creating new structures like with the slasher blade. They don't appear much different than your average infected because structurally they are the same. We see in Dead Space 2 though, that the other variants also acquire increased muscle mass as with the enhanced, and even begin developing kind of a greenish color, but the eyes still indicate an absolute saturation of bacteria within their bodies. So the last question is, why make them stronger in the first place? Well I believe this trait is based on something much more natural. A species that may want to propagate amongst the stars due to being compelled by a marker, but not as war hungry as humans may have in turn never built force multipliers. Instead, combat may come down to the naturally occurring structures on their bodies like claws, strength, or teeth, like it does with most animals. Making a necromorph who has all these capabilities and stronger bones, better muscle contractions, and increased neural connections would cause them to quickly outclass the ability of something to resist it as it's just flat out more durable. With humans, however, we are giant nerds, so we don't have claws, a ton of strength, or really sharp teeth. Instead, we just have big brainy brains to which we create force multipliers. The issue is though, even with all of our technological advancements, it's tough to bring these creatures down permanently as their natural body growths and armoring over time make them tougher and tougher to sever. Enhanced necromorphs exist because as the body becomes more and more inundated with the viral bacteria associated with the outbreak, and then pushed forward by the signal from the markers, their bodies become stronger as a result of the meddling of this bacteria. Bones are increased in density with neural connections to the muscles being strengthened, and then muscles being increased as well. Muscle, in turn, is then operated more precisely, which leads to more powerful necromorphs with increased speed. And these stronger bones allow for more direct hits from countermeasures, and could basically completely negate a human attempting hand-to-hand -hand combat as our bodies would not be able to inflict enough damage to incapacitate a necro with the more dense bones, even with adrenaline pumping into our system. Still though, humanity is always going to be number one.